Charlie came to Montana at a unique but very fragile time. Things were catching up with the open range. The cattle were in poor shape going into the fall. And the first storms came early in November and they just come, kept coming. It got worse and worse and worse. Hundreds of thousands of uh, head of livestock were lost and the cowboy life was never the same. Charlie's life was never the same either because he was the cowboy artist who in this quick sketch had boiled it down to the, the essence of this tragedy, this epic disaster that occurred. Charles M. Russell came to Montana in 1880 uh, as a 16 year old. He grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, came to Montana, fell in love and wanted to be a cowboy. Very popular among the cowboy camps for his storytelling ability and his creative, uh, his wit, his humor. But as he did that, he'd often create what you might call minor works of art. For example, a little we have a piece in the collection of a little pig that Russell created in that way. He might, in his pocket, have a piece of wax, or under his hat, as he was telling a story, have a piece of wax, and just, uh, without even looking, create these little mini sculptures, and um, uh, unveil them to the cowboys around the campfire. He said one time, no man ever lived long enough, or ever will live long enough, to paint all the pictures I have in my mind. He had a remarkable evolution as an artist from his early years as virtually a folk artist to his later years as uh, one of the great artists in American history. This painting I'm standing in front of is a good example of his early efforts in oil painting. And you can see that he's not quite sure of his technique. He has a sort of a muddy application of color. It's not a very clear application of color. He also doesn't know how to situate figures in space in a believable way. So you have the, the, the cowpuncher um, in, in a really wonderful action scene, but the, the horse and the steer aren't really anchored to the ground. In the earlier works, his colors were muddy and dark, but now you can see the surface is shimmering with his ability to apply the paint in a very striking and beautiful way, almost like cloisonne. And you can also see that the figures are grounded in believable space, and they, you believe the space into the canyon where the Missouri River is depicted, and the space to the background where you can actually see Square Butte, one of the landmarks of the Northern Plains. The sky is beautiful, and there's Russell's signature use of uh, this bright yellow, orange, stripe on the horizon that really does articulate the setting sun in a way that he couldn't really do so uh, easily before. It would be far too simplistic to dismiss Charlie as a throwback, as a man frozen in time. He was worried about the things that were being lost to America, the frontier, the buffalo, the Indian way of life, the environment, if you will. And so not only was he progressive in his day and his concerns for these things, but a hundred years later, as we look at Charlie Russell's values, we realize that the things that he's concerned for, that he was speaking out and advocating for, are, are the things that matter to us today. The, the open land, um, the fair treatment of Native Americans, and the environment. Um, so it's probably a good reason why um, he continues to engage us. <laughs>